Postgres is a popular database choice for Rails developers, and for good reason. I've been a MySQL guy for years, but the many features that Postgres provides has lured me to it. And I'll mention some of those features at the end of this episode, but first let me show you how to set up Postgres in a Rails application. First, you'll need to install Postgres, and if you go to the download section on the site, you can find packages for a variety of operating systems here. Now, if you're running Mac OS X Lion, it actually already comes with Postgres, which you can check with the PSQL command. Now, even though it's already provided, I prefer to install it using Homebrew to get the latest version and development files. So I already have Homebrew installed on this system, so I'll run brew install PostgreSQL to install it. Now, you could just let that run. It'll compile Postgres, so it might take a little while. Now, after that's done running, it will give you some instructions to finish setting it up. You'll need to run the initdb command to finish creating the database, and you'll need to start up the server with either setting up an agent or running this command to start it up manually. So here I'll run that initdb command to create that database. And then once that's done, I'll run this other command to start it up manually that they provided. And so now we should be running the latest version of PostgreSQL, which we are, and you can tell by running which PSQL that we're using the version that Homebrew installed under the user local directory, so it's important to know that we're not using the version that came with the system. Now with Postgres installed, we can set it up in a Rails application. If you're creating a new application, you can pass in the dash D option and specify to use the PostgreSQL database there. Now notice when it generated this application, it installed the PG gem. Now if you get an error message when this is compiling, then it might mean that Postgres isn't properly set up on your system. Also, if you've already installed this PG gem, you may need to uninstall it so that when it reinstalls, it uses the correct version of Postgres. Now if I open up this application and check out the database YAML file, you can see it's already configured to use Postgres, so that's really great. And the database is specified as blog development, so that's fine. But I do want to change this username here, which defaults to the name of the application. Now this is really good to do in production so that every application has a different user with permissions, but in development it's more convenient to keep everything under the same user, which is the user of your system. So I'm going to change this to rbates in my case. This Postgres user was automatically created with the Homebrew installation, but you might need to create it manually for other installations. Now I'll set this user as the test environment as well, and I'm actually just going to remove the production environment because I'm not using that on my local system. So now with the database YAML configured properly, we can create this database in Postgres. And fortunately, there's a convenient rate command to do this called db create all. So just run that. And it looks like that worked. Next, I'm going to generate some scaffolding to try this out. I'll call it article with a name and a content text column. And then migrate the database to generate that table. One thing you can see different with Postgres is that it gives you a couple notices telling you it created a sequence and an index, and that's perfectly fine. So let's start up this application and see if it works. And visiting localhost 3000 slash articles brings us to our scaffolding that we generated, and let's see if it works, creating a new record in the database, and it created successfully. Now if you ever want to interact with the database directly, you can run the psql command followed by the name of your database or you could just run the Rails DB command and that will do the same thing. So here we can perform SQL queries directly on our database and we can see all the article records in here. Or we can type in some Postgres specific commands such as backslash D to get a list of the tables and backslash D on a specific table and that will show us the information about a given table. Now you can get a full list of Postgres commands by passing backslash question mark to get a list here and you can also pass backslash h to get a list of SQL commands, and you can even pass in a specific one, such as select, to get documentation on that specific command. Really useful. And when you're ready to exit this console, just type backslash q. Now, if you aren't very familiar with the database and SQL, now is a great time to start learning. Just open up the Postgres manual, and you can run through the tutorial on there, and with the database console open, you can just easily experiment with various SQL commands in there. All right, so we know how to set up a new Rails application with Postgres, but what about an existing application that uses another database such as SQLite or MySQL? So I have an application here with several product records, and currently this is all stored in a SQLite database, but I would like to switch my application over to use Postgres and migrate all of this data over as well. So here's what that database YAML file looks like for that application. 
And as you can see, the development environment is using SQLite 3, but let's say we're using Postgres in production. We should always be using the exact same database engine in development that we're using in production, even the exact same version number if you can. Now the first step to switch this application over to Postgres is to update this database YAML file with the settings for Postgres. I'm just going to paste them in here because they're basically the same thing we did in the other application, except the database name is store instead of blog here. Next, go into your gem file and change the SQLite gem to PG, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install this gem. And then next, create the Postgres databases like we did before by running db create all. Now at this point, we could run the migrations, but we also need to migrate all the record data over from SQLite to Postgres. Fortunately, there is a handy Ruby gem to help with this called TAPS. It allows you to export data from one database and import it into another by using a Sinatra server. Let me show you. First run gem install TAPS to install the gem and its dependencies. Now this gem provides a TAPS command which you can use to serve a database and then pull data from that database to another database. I'll run the taps server command to host the SQLite database, and I just pass in the path, which is at db slash development.sqlite3 in this application. And then I just need to generate a username and password, whatever I want, to protect the database. And you can see that hosts the database on a Sinatra server and port 5000. And then in another tab in the terminal, I want to pull this data into the Postgres database and I need to specify my username at localhost slash the database name, which is store development. And then I need to pass in the URL to the Sinatra server, which is with authentication rbates colon secret at localhost port 5000. Now running this, it will pull all the data from my SQLite database into Postgres. Now I can try starting up my Rails application and see if that works. And visiting it in the browser, Shows all my product records there just like before, but this time stored in Postgres instead of SQLite. So now that we've switched over to Postgres, we can take advantage of its many features, including full text searching. Check out the Textical or PG Search gems to help out with that. You can even use Postgres as a worker queue. Check out the Q Classic gem to do that. And if you want a NoSQL database, Postgres can do that too using HStore. Check out this blog post for more information, which I'll link to in the show notes. Well, that's it for this episode on migrating to Postgres. Thanks for watching. Speaking of Postgres features, in this week's pro episode, I will show you how to do full text searching using Postgres, first from scratch, and then using tools like Textical and PG Search. I will also go into optimizing performance by adding indexes. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.